section we talk about light and how light is created. Usually in the nuclear physics we recognize electron of an atom where through a fuzzy light or fuzzy cloud which is rotating around the proton. The light in this case is created through where well, the plasmatic magnetic field or the magnetosphere of the plasma of electron interacts with plasmatic magnetic field of the proton and what is left as a radio magnetic field is light. The same process is repeated when you look at the plasmatic magnetic fields when arrived from the, for example the sun to the plasmatic magnetic field of the earth. Somewhere away from the earth on the upper atmosphere the two plasmatic magnetic fields interact and they slow down because they collide with each other. Exclusion. And when they collide, the plasmatic magnetic fields left over or magnetic fields left over is light. And that's how this light is created through the interaction of the two plasmatic magnetic fields. When they slow down, we see the slow version of it as light. In reality, when the magnetic field has a slowed down to produce light, therefore the light cannot be the ultimate speed that it has been considered up to now in the world of science. The light is part of the overall spectrum of the speed and uh, in so many ways it's very easy to know how it's created. What we've done through our developments, we have developed reactors which actually <coughs> create very simple reactors like this. This is exactly spherical, the same as the earth. The magnetic field created around these reactors are beyond, when they reach beyond the boundary of the reactor, they interact with the plasmatic magnetic field of the earth and they create light, they create the shining light. In so many ways, now we can explain. If, as people say, they have seen bright lights in the sky and they see different brightness, strength of brightness, is these systems, if they are and they do exist, they use gravitational system as what we have discovered and what we have developed. So now they are not ident unidentified flying objects, but in reality they are systems which they use gravitational magnetic fields where the plasmatic magnetic created within the center of the reactor of the system in its interaction with the plasmatic magnetic field of the earth which is both gravitational magnetic field and the magnetic field of the earth, that residual interaction of the two fields which is light is created. So we see them as bright light. They come with a different intensity because of uh, how we see the same principle in the universe. We see stars with different intensity. The intensity comes literally from the strength of the plasmatic magnetic field created inside the star interacting with the hydrogen plasma on the top layer of the star. The plasma's magnetic field of the hydrogen is constant. The only thing which can differ is the strength of the plasmatic magnetic field which is created within the center of the star. So the star is stronger, they create a intenser light. We see the same thing with our reactors. When they use a, we use a stronger magnetic field to create a stronger magnetic field internally, we see a brighter light around them. So we know the answer to UFOs. They're not UFOs, they are gravitational systems. We understand the concept, we understand the technology, we develop the technology and that's the consequence of what we are and what we do. What we have realized is that, as you see there is another reactor. Most of the objects in the universe are literally circular, spherical, as you see. We never see in the universe a cylindrical object or any other shape. This is the reason why the magnetic fields entangle, they link up to each other, so they make a spherical shape. And that's how the spherical shape is created. At the same time, we have developed half a spherical reactors, because we find it's much easier to manage for the space technology. So, in so many ways, we see half disks flying in the sky, we develop the half disk system, and they work. On the other hand, it comes to one of the most fundamental principles in the world of science why light bends near objects like uh, stars, near objects like uh, uh, heavy gravitational centers. Light is magnetically based. 
and for the first time, we, as explained earlier, gravitational fields are created through interaction of magnetic fields. So gravitational fields are magnetic field based. So two similar things interact. And that's why we see the bending or the lensing of the light. At the same time, we come to another phenomena of what we call the dark lights or dark spots on the sun. Dark spots on the sun appears very much during every 10 and a half years, 11 years cycle of the uh, polarity. When the magnetic field in the center starts moving, so there is more interactions with the top layers on the surface because the magnetic fields of the center of the planet or the star are created through the hydrogen atoms and the surface of the hydrogen atom too of the plasma of the same they create a balanced fields or they create what they call the dark spots which means in reality there is less fragments of light left to create the same principles applies to the rings of the Saturn and the same principles of the dark matters which we have explained in the book on the other hand what is very interesting is that from now on we have developed, we know the technology, uh, how to make crafts that are mass independent because now the mass is totally independent of the, uh, where the star or where the system is. We know how it works, we hopefully can use this technology for advantage of humanity. And at the same time, the same principle, the same concepts of having in reality understanding that the plasma is made of the matter, the dark matter and antimatter and the residual magnetic fields within it. It doesn't matter if it's a proton, if it's an electron or if it's a star. The whole thing, once we understand this concept, we can use it for different purposes. For example, we have reported in the past, very recent past, that uh, we have managed to coat diamond structure materials on wires. We have we have taken this knowledge from the same what we spoke about into medical side. We see how MS can be eradicated very rapidly with understanding and use of this technology. How other illnesses which we have trial tested have been eradicated. Maybe at the end we can conclude in one thing. That is where we started this discussion regarding the fire, burning of the wood. And at the same time, we have to, have to depart mm -hmm. from this ethos of burning. Now we have learned how to use the magnetic fields of the matters within the structure of a plasma. We do not need to burn. We do not need to destroy. Maybe in the long run, we will learn more about how these matters and the interactions will help us to achieve what we were looking for and what we wanted from us. In a way, as the picture of the book says, it's a trinity between the matter, antimatter, dark matter. And this trinity, if it's understood and utilized properly, will come to a point that we can have as much energy as we need, we can produce as much food as we need without destroying the environment. And at the same time, maybe it's a time to say, in understanding the new construction of the plasmas, in the construction of the universe, there will be never an end to the universe, because these magnetic fields forever interact, doesn't matter what the strength they are, they produce new conditions, new environments. So, I hope we have opened a new insight into the world of science, and at the same time, we have developed technologies which proves our concept and what we have developed. Thank you very much.